Hi everyone, Soul Super 17 here. Let me show you like usual. I did not, you know, own the pictures, but I made the thumbnail and not pay video. Alright, okay. So here's the thing. I am in my room and I am well going to start part four of this. Reasons why, because I already have an idea and an epic scene that's gonna give technically Azuku all of his scars. Yes, I will give Azuku all the scars he has from Canon. But not the one on his face, just, you know, arms and chest and back, basically. Reasons why? <clears throat> <clears throat> I just don't like Ironwood, so... Freak him? Yeah, I just want to that. <laughs> I don't mind if someone likes him. I mean, he's a good character, but just in the volume... Yes, two? At the end of it, he just... Mm -hmm. Whew. I just, well, you know, hate him for it, because it kind of led to the downfall and multiple attack, and yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, if anyone has watched Ruby, actually everyone has watched Ruby, I, I hoped, I hope, if you guys don't know, watch the freaking series and you'll see what I mean, so, yeah, anyways, let's get into this. What if? Enough of me blabbing. Also, to anyone who keeps asking me to make certain series, like the Ultron one, I'm kind of trying to figure out how to work it to where Izuku's brother... I, really, I had this idea from the very beginning. Izuku's brother in the Ultron series was different. I'm going to say that much. Not to spoil it. And Izumi is going to be the main antagonist, basically. And, well, yeah. <sighs> Enough of me, like, spoiling that series, but there's just a lot of it that I'm trying to figure out, which has been in my mind, thinking, but this, I want to get this part out, part four out, because of, I have this epic fight scene I want to do. Also, you're about to say BS to this, but... <sighs> Why? I mean, well, I'm mean, gonna have to give to Zuku. It's gonna be way more funnier if you really think about it. Because he technically has a, a semblance that erases everything and then allows, then basically another side to his semblance, basically it allows the scarf to basically turn into any sort of weapon someone has and uses it. So why not just add on to this, the semblance that we get from Cinder? Basically, heating up any sort of dirt or sand or anything to be, like, glass. So, yes. We all know if you know who she is. Great. If you don't know, yeah. Anyways. So. We go to where I kind of wanted to do this scene. But last night I was too tired to, you know, do it. So, Blake and Azuku get into the nurse's office. And basically, Blake Simpson, you know, sits him down and he's just like, and basically, Blake sits him down and says, all right, take off your shirt and jacket. He's like, uh, oh, okay, because he's shot, him, you know, in the shoulder and arm area, basically, left one. And he's like, thinking to himself, man, why did she become so demanding? So, when she, you know, sees Azuku's shoulder, basically, she's like, ah, it's deeper than I thought. He's like, <laughs> Pulled out with ease. She goes, you idiot, you should have left an in at least. You don't know how much blood you could have lost. He's like, I'm fine. <sighs> so, you know, she basically grabs any, you know, medical, like, patches and stuff. Like a needle and thread too. Then the nurse comes in. And she goes like, oh, you're already here. Good. And she sees, you know, Blake already, you know, started to get, like, you know, stitching him up, basically. And she was like... Oh, you already were gonna... She goes, yeah, but... <laughs> do you mind helping me out, ma'am? She goes, no, no problem, it's my job. So, they patching up Azuku, and she does say, she's right, you really should have let the arrow in. I mean, you would have lost less blood. But you're lucky you ain't, well, passed out yet. He's like, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that fall. I mean, that, that far. She was... Uh, Sierra, your your words are being slurred. He's like, yeah, I guess. I guess because I'm starting to get tired a little bit. And the nurse says, well, that's what happened. And Blake's saying, like, 
I told you not to do anything stupid. He's like, okay, if I didn't do something, Ruby was going to get shot, okay? What was I supposed to do? She goes, well, push her out of the way and dodge? And he's like, huh. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Jeez. So after the nurse says, well, all done. You know, she basically says a patch on him. And he goes like, how long is this going to take? You know, it's too fast. She goes, hmm, about two days. Your aura is very high, so you should only take that long. He's like, thanks, ma'am. There's no problem, but you have to rest here. For the rest of the day, he's like, ah, crap. Here goes the ball then. And you know, Zuku's laying down and he goes, So, you can go back to Sun? She goes, No, we're gonna talk. He's like, Fine, let's talk. So basically, Blake's asking him, Why did he, you know, not tell her or Yang? Well, what? Weiss. He's like, Well, saw Ruby leaving and I just went after. I saw someone there and <laughs> I just followed my instincts. Basically, I didn't, I'm always having a weapon on me with my scarf, so I didn't think of calling mine either, so. <laughs> Here's Izuku. Please don't, you know. It was, I won't do nothing to head, rushing in head first. I'll call for backup. She was good. All of a sudden, you know, Izuku's kind of waving his right hand in the air. As some reason she sees something brown coming off of it. She's like, Izuku, what's that? He goes, uh, I, I don't know. What you... As then all of a sudden, the dust in the air starts to turn into a projectile. Looks like a, you know, if you would do it ice. So basically, you know, basically it turned to that. But it looks like it's glass. As all of a sudden, Goodwitch and, you know... Basically, Headmaster Ozpin, you know, walks in. As Ozpin says, Well, Zuku, how did you get that? He's uh, I, I, I don't... Wait. I wasn't hallucinating. Shit. Which, good, which is saying, Wait, I, I think I've seen something like that before. He's like, <sighs> Okay, well... You know, remember when you said the power was half and someone took it? You know, the maiden's power. He's like, yeah. You know what says, and Austin says, yes. Well, turns out that power somehow has a consciousness. Or, I guess it's just when it's with me? I don't know. This is all just weird. Which, this kind of shocks Ozpin. Which he goes, huh. Well, I mean, you are from a different world. A different dimension, even. And this should have been an unforeseen effects with the power. It must have changed. Hmm. This is something me and Amber did not foresee. This is actually quite interesting. And <laughs> So, basically, it has a consciousness now. And it will choose whoever it finds worthy. It was, instead of passing on now, since it has changed. Significantly, I see. Which, you know, Osman was pacing back and forth from Good which is a shot. As he basically, Zuku just sees, well, the figure, you know, basically, in the shape of a woman, just nodding. She goes, Uh huh. It's because you had the court gene from your world. I mean, like, I think I remember I said he technically, you know, should have had it. But it was like nothing was there. Or, you know, it's, you know, should have been there. You know, from his parents' DNA, and yet he still had the court gene, but he just, you know, doesn't have a court. Something like that, if I remember correctly. So let's just go with one of those two options, or the third one. And she goes, So, basically, since I became a part of you, I slowly started to get a consciousness. And, well, you're gonna say, How? Easy. I mean,. You're totally different from this world. The laws of this world don't really apply. Well, dimension, really. And since two different beings, aka a power and you, came to be basically me choosing you, which was already kind of me 
already saying that I already had a consciousness, but not really much to manifest myself to you. I basically am the fall. Well, should be, you know, the power of fall. You know, go to the, a different fall maiden. But, since now I have a full consciousness and only able you can see me, I basically decided to, well, help you out. Since this is very entertaining. And you actually are one of the best people to actually ever well, use my po use the power. And it's so different. I mean, normally you have to use, well, wands or any weapon. But you're saying to just do it with your normal body, and basically through punches or kicks. And, well, I just thought, I mean, I should at least thank you for, you know, giving me a consciousness and letting me talk. And Azuka's just blinking, he's like, I think he just says to himself, this is fucking weird. He's like, he's just saying even more now. He goes like, I have a feeling I would have had multiple people in my head, and I'm, but they will somehow, I would not be freaked out about it. Why am I so, like, nonchalant about this now? But, like, I'm still freaking out. As, well... That happens, and then basically Osman says, Azuku, you alright? He's like, yeah. What were you saying? Sorry, it's just, I was lost in thought about this. He's like, well, I came with a theory that it's because you're from a different dimension. Basically, the power chose you. The power of the Fall Maiden, basically, chose you. And you're from a different world, so that means it must have a consciousness all on its own. But, since you are from a different world, and technically, well, you had, or didn't have a quirk, yet you still have the DNA from your mother and father, who technically did have quirks, it basically slowly gained a consciousness over time, and then allowed itself to talk to you, only and mentally to give you, well, the power that you were worthy of. So, the electricity... That you have is the light, basically the ability to have a lightning strike your enemies. But yet, it's now electricity that courses through your veins that can technically increase your speed and reflexes, and maybe even perceive time differently if you train hard enough with it. And well, you probably combine it with your fire. So, in conclusion, the person who has the fa other half of the fall man's power had the semblance or the abilities as you were using. It now then probably was added onto to where you create something from your actual body now. Whenever you need it, you can just technically change whatever that was floating in the air into whatever you need. Weapon, projectile, anything now. And so, we must find this person who probably has a semblance to do this to then... Well, get the other power back, the other half. But this will be quite difficult. As basically Ozpin looks at him then, and he was like, So, what do you think of my theory? He's like, uh, that's what the, the power said. <laughs> okay. As then he just looks in to the side, glancing over, and basically just nodded his head. And he says, and I gave it a second ability where you can actually produce dust. Well, only... Simple dust, you know, not too like f elemental. It is has no single effect, but you can only use it to create and then heat it up to become something else. He's like, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> uh, it just told me that, or the power just told me that I can just, uh, you have to see it. I, I need to get up. Which, you know, Izuku's using his right arm to push himself off the, well, nurse's bed. I mean, the bed in the nurse's office. As then Blake helps him up, he goes like, I'm not going to go out there shirtless, so. Blake, you know, nods, and she hasn't realized until now. So, she's looking away, but not trying to think of anything because of, well, there's a reason why. So, she gives Izuku, you know, a shirt and, you know, jacket. As basically they walk over to her training area. Which Ruby Yang Weiss comes over 
and says, Are you okay? He's like, Yes, and something new happened to me. Come on. Like, huh? So, well, he gets to the fighting arena, the one with sand. He was like, All right. So, he basically kicks the sand, and in midair, the sand just turn, like starts to, you know, combine with each other, and then suddenly it turns into glass. Like actual, it's like glass projectile, as then he just shoots it at the wall. It, which they're all shocked by that. He's like, "That's the new semblance I have." Which they're like, "Huh?" He's like, "Okay, quick rundown. Power of the Fall Maiden, because I'm from a different world. You know, kind of use the gene I have between my parents, which were both quirks. Which they, I mean, which they both have quirks. So, and I should have had a quirk, and or was stolen from me." Kind of forget how because all this stuff have been happening, truthfully. And so, it just gained the consciousness, and it gave me the power of the person who has the other half. And technically, it can the person can do this. And well, basically, also since my semblance has two different abilities, one to erase other people's semblance, auras, and dust abilities. Well, then. <laughs> And then I changed my scarf. I could use the scarf to transform into an actual weapon. It also gave me the other side, well, other side ability to produce this. As all of a sudden, something starts coming off of Zuka's hand. As then he basically, you know, put, you know, starts slowly moving his hand downwards. As then all of a sudden, the actual all that brown dust turns into some into a katana as he grabs the actual grip of it. As everyone is shocked. As then all of a sudden, he kind of, well, uh, thinks, wait, can I turn this into a flaming katana then? As his eyes start to glow yellow a little bit, and the, so the, well, the blade starts to glow red, and then it goes on fire. And he goes, okay, I can use my unsmental ability for this. Good, good to know. As then he kind of just, like, slashes to the side as it extinguishes to his because he wanted to, so it is to his will, as then the dust disappears when he lets go of it, and, well, it looks like it's just no more. Which, Ozpin goes, huh. Well, seems like you are getting quite a level up. He's like, <laughs> oh my god, this stuff is talking to me way too much now. This is like some cheesy anime, I think. Where the character should be, be, you know, getting stronger progressively instead of so quick. As then he kind of just look like, you know, basically look, pulls out something that no one can else see. And it's the script. He's like, seriously, why did I have to have this happen to me? Why? Seriously, creator. He's like, because I thought it'd be interesting and cool. And come on. You basically can then bring out a bow and just start shooting, shooting out of nowhere from... Basically, sidelines that no one can, you know, see you. And also, it'd be kind of funny if someone's like, where is he? And then, you know, you basically just make a whip, bring them in, knock that person out, and then basically you just, just Batman everything. He's like, that's just way too easy, but I can see the point. All right. So basically, as Izuku gets back into the story, yes, I had to put a fourth wall break because... I thought it would be, you know, way more interesting and also kind of explanation why I did it. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Please let me know if this was a good idea. If not, then I can technically not do it. Or, well, actually I can do it, but less, you know, but not have it in there that much. <sighs> but anyways, continuing on. So, as Zuku says... So, well, we just have to look for someone who can basically heat up dirt, sand, anything, and then turn it to glass. Which then Ruby's like, wait, glass? Like, mirror? And, you know, basically she says that loud. He's like, huh? He's like, well, sorry, it's just because of, well, how can I say this? When I first, when I messed, you know, Miss well, Professor Goodwitch, it's when basically someone was using some type of ability to turn stuff into glass and you know shoot at us. Which then Goodwitch says, I remember that too. Which Osmond goes, hmm. So then this must be the person who took the full main's power. Did you both get a good look at her? She goes, no. They both say exactly the same time. Which then Blake says, so we have to be on the lookout. He goes, yeah. 
I don't know what she was doing there, but something must have happened. They must have sent a, I don't know, like the terminal. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Sometimes when I'm from, there are places, there are things called movies. I know you guys have them, but I think you guys have them, right? Movies? They, I don't really know for sure, but they go like, eh, sort of? Exactly. Okay, okay. So technically there are these spy movies or action movies where someone, well, plants a virus into something. And so they might have done that. For what reason, I don't know. But try to do any, well, basically checks to see if there was anything in there. And if so, then don't get rid of it. Which automatically like, what are you saying? He's like, well, let them think we don't know. But we do know. Have someone invent a counteractive for this virus. And whatever they plan, we it can immediately get rid of whatever is happening right then and there. Which Ozman goes, huh. Lead our enemy into a trap in the false secure, you know, false, you know, wait, false security. Into then coming out, and then we fight them and take them down. Excellent strategy. He was like, it's a risky one, but hey, I mean, it's the best week. I best I can get come up with right now. Which, Blake does say it is risky, but it's also good. So he was like, eh, just came up with it. <laughs> Which, Yang was like, so when we fight them, I mean, are we going to beat them down to knocked out, or are we going to? He's like, we're going to do a lot more than beating. Could basically make them wish they were knocked out. I think. I don't know. I'm just trying to focus not on the pain. Which everyone goes like, yeah, that's uh that's a good reason. So yeah. So after that, I mean Izuku basically was given something so that way he wouldn't move his arm as much. And well they told to get a good night rest. So after that Ruby does go to the exact same meeting, Azuku's there too, and he does explain to him, well, Ironwood about what could happen. Which Ironwood says, preposterous. We have the high security. And besides, if they are even trying to do something, what do you think? What could it be? He was like, and then basically Azuku, Azuku looks outside the windows and like, what about that? All your stuff relies on technology. Technology can be easily hacked into, no matter what. Even if it's the high security. It may take longer, but it may actually happen. You can't just think just because you have a whole lot of military force, you're the strongest around. Basically, there's a lot more than just, well, military, sir. You have to have, basically, strategy, condition, you know, contingency plans, and, well, the courage to admit that you were wrong. And, yeah, I mean... Pretty much, you don't seem like you would ever admit that you are wrong. It's like, and Ironwood just stays quiet. So basically, I mean, Ruby says exactly the same thing like in canon, in which, well, basically, Ozpin says, thank you. We would do so. I mean, we will, like, basically take a look out for it. And, thank you, Zuku, for basically your strategy. In which, Ruby's leaving Azuku, but he goes, Oh, but wait, I must ask you a question, Azuku, in private. Which, Ruby's looking at him, he's like, I'll be fine. So, she nods and, you know, leaves. So, he goes, Yes, Ospin? He goes, What do you think? Huh? I've been wondering, Why are you always, Well, your group has always been, and in trouble, and yet you're not with them half the times. It was easy. I've been training my pa while well, trying to handle this power, and well, uh, turns out my arm is almost healed. I went to the nurse just. Uh, I'll be going to the nurse just to get a look at it, see if it's well. I can get the stitches out. He's like, I see. But do you believe? What Ruby said is about this east, the east side, and the, you know, not being around, like in like east side, basically like where the coast is and stuff. He was like, if you're replying that basically, then well, 
there may be some white thing out there, and they're playing something. Possibly. I wasn't there to gather any information with them, but... Yeah. It's better off if we just come clean. I mean, you already know. You are the headmaster. So you technically wouldn't know what's happening around... Well, with your schools around, so... The city will be no problem. Am I right, sir? As Austin smiles and says, Smart. Yes. So, I will do the courtesy and that, well, and give your team the assignment, even though the grim where you'll be going is very high. But you will have a huntsman, a pro with you. But I don't think that is the matter. So, try to figure out what you can do with your abilities, Azuku. Your new ones. And, when you're ready, we will, well, hope for the best that it does not fail you. It was, right, sir. And Azuku, you know, says, is that all? And he goes, yes. He goes, thank you. And, you know, he leaves. Go Witch is watching Azuku, and she does have a smile on her face. And when, you know, he's leaving, Ironwood saying, like, the exact same thing, but she goes, but then, you know, Go Witch is saying this. Your military force means nothing if we give them an assignment. And she goes, what? They're just kids. He goes, Yes, but when push comes to shove, we don't know who's basically going to act like a kid and run, or act like a huntsman or huntress. And besides, a full-on military force is a stupid idea to run in into the enemy base. Basically, we don't know what's happening, and if, well, as in all of a sudden, basically someone comes online saying, Ozpin, we have done a full diagnosis, and we have found a unusual virus in the system. He was like, ah, thank you. What do you want us to do with it? Analyze it and come with a counter for it. We cannot get rid of it right away. He's like, are you sure? This may affect our system. He was like, I know. But, please, do not get rid of it. Just figure out a counter for it, and then, when the time is needed, we will get rid of it. And the person, basically on the screen, says, yes, sir. And, you know, shut down. You know, it goes away. As an been saying, <sighs> that boy really comes up with so many surprises. <laughs> Which I was saying, like, you rely on that boy too much. It was, I wouldn't be so sure I rely on him. It's more like he's trying his best to help out everyone he can. And if he meant to keep people safe, I have a feeling he would even risk his life, put it on the line. Which, you know, good witch agrees. It's like, so what? We just sent out scouts? He goes, don't you, that, don't you usually do that? Or do you just rush in and let your forces fight? While you have to figure up a counteractive strategy to the enemy. Which, yeah. So, Ironwood caves in on that logic. What are you thinking? can't rely on one boy. It's impossible. So, Zuku basically goes to the nurse's office, the nurse basically looks at it, and she goes, huh, hmm, I did see you had a lot of aura, but this much? He was like, is something wrong? She's like, yes, and it looks like the wound is perfectly healed. The stitches, they weren't supposed to dissolve, but it looked like it did. Amazing. He's like, <laughs> uh, thanks, I guess. He goes, well, seems like you're lucky. He seems like you basically, well, can move your arm perfectly fine. Try it. As he does, he goes, huh. Feels like it never even happened. He goes, let me see. And she pulls out something to check to see, you know, inside of his basically muscle tissue and stuff. And it has reformed back. And... You know, but there's like it's still like the intention like he was hit. So she goes, Well, it's back to normal, but it still has that look to it that it was hit and disformed. So still I would take it easy for at least another day. He goes, Right. Thank you, ma'am. He goes, No problem. So 
when Nizuku gets back, Ruby already told him what happened, but, you know, they asked him when he gets there, he goes, so, how was it? He was like, you know, you girls are really, really not subtle on your stuff, right? They're like, huh? He's like, listen, we had a robot fight, you, we basically, you girls had a robot fight until I, and I, you know, came in, um, let me see, across town, at the docks, on the east side, basically, you know, where the docks are and stuff, or southeast side, I'm not really good with this area still, she was, and they're like, and some other stuff happened too, if you really think about it, Ospen should know, you know, and they all look at each other, and, you know, then look at Ruby, and then back at him. He's like, what? It's obvious that Ospen knows. I mean, you really thought you, you know, he wouldn't? He's the headmaster of Beacon for a reason. He basically could cover this whole entire city and know what we do outside of it. To then give us a proper, you know, punishment. Which, they all look, you know, at each other and then nod. Saying, that is, that does make sense. So what now? He's like, basically, we're going to be the scouts. And try to find the white fame. So, huh? We basically had to have a huntsman, you know, basically, t you know, assigned to us. So, in which they all look at each other. But then he's like, but Yang says, anyways, Ruby, we got a package from Dad. In which, well, Ruby goes like, open, open, open it. And basically, the same thing happens when she turns into that little chibi form, I guess. And. But when they do, something falls on the ground, and it's Zwei. <gasps> and, well, Weiss does exactly the same thing about this filthy, disgusting mud's gonna be staying with us. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And Blake, you know, is gonna be on the bed, just saying, Say, make it, you know, not be near me and such. And Azuku, you know, over to like, well, that dogs aren't that bad. I mean, I didn't know you have all cat, you know, like, you know, instincts. Which he was like, uh. <laughs> He's like, look, dogs aren't really that bad. Trust me. I mean, if it does bite you or anything, I just patch you up. She's like, don't joke around. He's like, <laughs> I mean, I have to basically say thank you somehow. He's like, don't have to say thank you in that way. He's like, fine, fine. So, you know, then they basically have, and then the food's all out there and stuff, you know, falls out the pack, you know, mail, and why is he like, how's that even possible? And Azuka just says, like, I don't know, storage semblance or something? Who knows? So, basically, they all go to basically see what type of huntsman, you know, they're going to choose and which job, basically. And, well... I think the whole entire team comes in, and they do say, I mean, they do talk to Velvet, and say about the mission shouldn't, like, have taken that long as it should have, and, or, like, that quickly, I think, and basically, says, that was alright, basically, I just had, you know, basically, my teammates help, I think that was, like, should have been the last part, but I imagine in this part. So, you know, basically you're going to have a huntsman of your own with you and train you. So, yeah. So, basically, Huntsman tells them, basically, this. So, your trip. You basically are going to be, you know, choosing jobs. And these jobs will have the huntsman with you. You'll be trained by them. You will have to listen to them. And, well, you have to show them what you learned and what you can do. Because if you lack any skill... They'll send you right back to Beacon. So, good luck to all of you. And stay safe. So, basically, Ruby, Blake, Yang, Weiss, and Suku all go to the extermination one. And, well, they were denied. And, like, huh? He's like, just wait a few minutes. And then Osmi goes like, ah, ladies, Zuku. And Izuku is like, uh, hey. <laughs> Ouch. He's like, so, it seems like you all were trying to... You know, she was, well, extermination. You see, the grim count is way too many for first year, so you're going to let second years or further 
take on to it. But, well, since I can make, well, bend the rules a little bit for you, you know, for you, I will basically do it, give you it. And, you know, basically he types in, you know, you know, basically for Team Ruby to be assigned it, as they're all, like, happy and stuff, and he was like, now then, stay safe. And then, you know, he leaves, as they're like, huh, I wonder why he did that, and then he goes like, but, I have a question to ask. Why is it always you girls always, like, being everywhere when basically trouble happens at the docks? You know, fighting my fane and the thief Roman. Then, basically, a big giant robot fight. And on the east side, specifically, as everyone just looks at Ruby and then Izuku. So... So I come to think, hmm, maybe the white fane is somewhere out there on the east side, and you girls are trying to, well, go there either way. So I don't think even if I even try to stop you, it would even matter. Or you're a huntsman. So why not have gaping roots anyway? But be on the lookout for any danger that could happen, we do not know. So basically, listen to your huntsmen, follow their rules. And stay safe. And he leaves, and then basically, he says, "Good luck," and then leaves. Finally, and she goes like, "Well, that was a weird, oh, you know, thing." Yang says. So, basically, Ruby says, "So, are you ready, everyone?" You know, and everyone says, "Yeah." Zuko says, "Well, it's the worst that can happen." I just jinxed it. <laughs> and so, when they get there, to they see their. Well, Huntsman teacher, basically they see Bartholomew Oblak. Yeah, just Oblak. They see as they all look at him and was like, "What? He's not that bad." He's like, "Hello, there, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, I'm your basically Huntsman teacher, and we're about to go to well, this city on that east side, basically." And goes, "Why is that?" He goes like, "Because there's a lot. Well, that's where the most grim are." And there seems to be, well, underground caves and mountain ranges. And so, and plus, it's abandoned city. In which the place says, and a good place for hideouts. He's like, exactly. So, let's all get to basically the airship. I already have the plan, of course. Leave all your bags, because I have all the essentials. And we're basically three minutes behind. As I said, he runs all the way to the airship. And so, Nora was saying, you know, you're at this, you know, well, not Nora yet. Ruby was saying, let's go and try to save the world, basically. And then Nora was saying what happened, and, you know, Sun and, well, Neptune, you know, that all happened. And basically, Oblek says, we're four minutes late. And they go, <laughs> like, bye, everyone. It's like, it's like, okay, okay, I'm sorry I jinxed us. Look, I'm sorry. Like, just, just, you know, be quiet as everyone just says. He's like, <sighs> So, after that, you know, they go on to the airship. And, well, he gives a history about the, well, the city and stuff. And, yeah. So, basically, when they land, they all basically are well, looking out to see if Grim. And then, well, Oblak sees Ruby's bag. He's like, Ruby, I told you to leave your bags at school. What do you have that? And then all of a sudden, the, you know, Zwai pops out, and she says, "Get back in the bag." And he goes like, Izuku's just like really just looking at her like, "What the? Why would you bring your dog with you?" As in, well, Obla says, "This is." And then also he just disappears and grabs the dog and says, Absolutely amazing! Dogs are really good at companions and excellent humor and smell. Basically, if we, well, every huntsman will have, you know, basically need one of these. Huntsman or huntress. As basically, Y says, I'm a genius. I mean, not Y, I mean, Ruby. Ugh, messing up. I'm trying to think of a funny scene I can have Zuko say right now. <gasps> Sorry. Kind of trying to add some stuff in. Not to make it too much so similar to the story. You know, to the you know, TV show, so, I mean, anime. Anyways. 
So, well, as Izuku was like, hey, uh, Grim. Everyone just looks, they see one Grim. As, well, Ruby was saying, wait, should we just kill it? And then, well, Oblux says, no, we will follow it, track it, lead it to its pack. Lead us to its well, nest and follow that now. Okay, oh, there's a pack. Wait, so he did talk about like, well, no. And then he goes like, wait, how did Grimms even, you know, come to be? He's like, oh, negative emotions, basically, d atmospheres, a lot of factors come to it. Hatred, it's all negativity. He's like, oh, he's like, yes. And there's, and they said there's more than, well, bigger pack than I thought. All right, everyone, show me your stuff. And, oh. Good luck. So, uh, basically the same things would happen with Izuku. I mean, well, not the same things that happen with Izuku with all the girls. Basically, Ruby, Weiss, and, you know. Yeah, and Izuku basically just, like, gets surrounded by them. He's like, <laughs> Alright. Let's see what you guys are made of then. As he just snaps his fingers as, you know, the same shadow, like, fear goes around them as they all, like, get, like, lowered, he's like, alright, and then he basically gets out of stack, he's like, come at me, so, they all, well, one jumps forward, is basically, he just, you know, has his staff, hits the chest of the, well, Beowulf, Grim, and so basically, he didn't realize this, but when he, you know, hits the impact of the Grim, it just, like, explodes, kinda, he's like, what the? And, well, he's thinking, wait, have I gotten stronger? Let's see. So, he basically runs towards one, smacks it in the face, and smacks it on the side, and turns out like the... F he basically made one light hit, and then one heavy hit, and the heavier hit basically cuts the thing in half. He's like, huh, I really can do this with it then. So, basically, he's he just realized he's using... And he's have a heavier hit and way more strength than he should. Basically, it is basically like, well, you know, damaging the actual Grimms. If you guys are really thinking about it, like, okay. So, unknowingly, Izuku's unintentionally using the force of fire, basically, to go around the, well, the staff, each end, basically. And, well, it is kind of creating a field around the end of the staff to where it'll be all on the heavier hits to be a lot more damaging than what you really think of. There's like a, you could say, a small incision of a blade there. Which these blades are technically condensed fire down that can basically cut through almost almost anything. But with Grimm's, it is like a dangerous well, sword just going right through them instantly. I'm, I'm using my imagination on this. So, it's unintentional, Zuka does not know this. So, he basically is like taking them all down really easily then, as then all of a sudden, he basically holds his, well, staff, and he wants to have the blade come out, but he wants to see something. He wants to see if he basically can hit this Grim that's running at him, you know, because he's a little bit, like, t a little bit away from it. Like, he, he has to basically, from footsteps, he has to take, like, 15 like steps to get to it and again like, this is getting like closer as then Zuku like swings the step and then he sees a fire being shot at it he's like what the as well it just goes right into what well, the grim you know taking off the top half of it as it just fades away he's like how did I how did I do that and well uh, well Oblock basically now the, the professor saw it. He's like, interesting, very interesting. I didn't, basically thinking that. So I did not know the young boy could do that. I mean, Ospin did tell us he was different from everyone else. He even told us his situation. But this is strange. Hmm. Maybe this dimension of ours is counteracting with well, his world, giving him a little more power than what he should have, just with his normal semblance. As then, well, Izuku kind of sees a little fire on the each end. Making a little blade for him. He's like, wait, did I do that un unintentionally? As, well, he kind of just starts swinging the staff. And, well, it does start, like, getting, like, for, you know, centrical force, basically. 
it starts like and then he started moving on fast and then it does you know turn to flames. He was like, Okay. Okay, science class does come in handy right now. But huh. This was all uh metal, so maybe I maybe there's even some stuff that when I got it from in between dimensions before it transformed. Wait, if it transformed that means there must be hidden abilities within this. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a really much of a problem. As you know, the fire goes out. As well, the power basically comes over and is like, well, appears and is like, well, it seems like you're pretty smart on that. I mean, well, yes, since the staff did transform to basically instead of the scythe appearing whenever you want it to, it will. It basically also will, well, if you spin it really fast enough, even, well, like you saw, you're just starting to unlock way more than power than what you thought you had. It's like, and then he just looks and nods. So, he's thinking, so it's just not my fire bending then. It's lightning and now this dust ability. I mean, well, technically turning stuff into glass. It's a lot more than this. <sighs> Alright. So, as Ozzy says, well done everyone, well done. Now then, we will continue with Stormrate and, well, basically, and research this place as much as we can. Alright. As everyone says, yeah. So they basically do that. And, well, well give me a minute, guys. Alright, back, I'm back, everyone. So, after that, he says, uh, yeah, the little fight scenes all have, and then him just asking every teammate why they want to become a huntsman. Now, before he asks Ruby anything, this will go to Azuku. He was, ah, Azuku, may I ask you a question? He was like, sure. Well, it's more of a. It was more of a what? It was personal question. I am curious to ask you this about your world. Well, dimension. He was... Oh, yeah. Um, how did Headmaster Ozpin, you know, told you about my dimension? He was like, well, he said someone came to him in a, light in, well, in a green light. Basically, after it was stopped, there was just someone there in a cloak with glowing eyes. Explain to him the situation you were in, that you are being summoned to this world, or to our dimension, from a different, di other dimension altogether. Basically, the staff you are holding is, well, unique. And that you will experience, or, well, experience or see different abilities coming from it, and, well, possibly even you, since you are technically from a different dimension. This is to be expected, I see. Or, well, as most of us teacher well, could see it, some didn't, so that's been had to explain. But besides the point, your reason for this is this world was in peril. Something dangerous coming, or in the near future. So, it brought you here to save or help. It does not matter, well, everyone was actually quite excited to hear that. Because that meant something new was happening, and different. So, my question is though, you were coming to Huntsman. Why did you choose it? Or, why did you want to? It was, Azuku basically was killing a grim, just basically like, had the siphon cuts it, you know, into two. He's like, where I come from, being a hero means you have a quirk, a power. And, if you don't have a power, you're nothing. You're just useless. A Deku. That's what my f former friend used to call me. Classmates. My world wasn't great. It wasn't perfect. The only reason why I even could bear that world was because of my mom. It was like you couldn't prove to anyone that you were useful. I wanted to save people's lives with a smile on my face. Showing them that I wouldn't run away, even if it meant my life was in danger. I just wanted to help people. And prove everyone wrong. And... Basically, I chose to become a huntsman because I can do that. But later on, my... Well, while I was at Beacon, I learned there was a lot more to it. 
there's basically there's a risk factor in, in it. it. I know it seems like it's easy. At first, I wasn't even that good at fighting. I was just letting whatever I learned flow. Basically, my fighting abilities and instincts helped me out in a fight. And then when I was learning the everything. There's many, many things that were different from this dimension to mine. So, it's it was hard to settle in at first. But my team actually helped me with that. <laughs> and, as you know, they knew. So, they... I didn't fully trust them at first because of my experience with friends. As he said, quote-unquote... And the professor nods. He goes, understandable. Now, please continue. He's like, so I learned that Huntsman isn't just about saving people. It isn't about just fighting grim. There, there's just many lives at stake, and sometimes you can't like save everyone. So I learned that you need to just save the people in front of you. And the fact is, even that may not be enough. Teamwork was always a thing you had to do as a hero. Fighting against villains, people that do bad things. And sometimes, you would die even in the battlefield. Same thing with this. So, I can, I have to basically have a two different sides. One that will be ready for a fight, and one that just... Carefree. And when fighting Grim, it's gonna be well, difficult to be coordinated with people, with basically your teammates sometimes, if you fight or anything. So I've learned to, well, I'm learning to, you know, sh show I trust them. I don't want to be a hindrance to the team. So I keep training as hard as I can to get stronger. So that way, I'm not useless. It's like, I see. So you became a huntsman to save people. And, well, because of this, this will, well, you learned over time that basically there's a lot of things in this than you thought. A lot of hard work and training and knowledge comes to it, too. He goes, yes, sir. He goes, well, what about adventure? He's like, that's only half of it. I get to go places, and I learned when I was there. I learned that beacon. And I'm kind of happy about that. I'm not just stationed in a city. Just doing patrols and... Well, you know. <laughs> it's like, ah. Very admirable. Wanted to help out people. Traveling's good. Meeting new people, also. And you learned that it's a lot different than what you thought. Am I correct? It was, yes. I just saw... I was just told I'll be saving people. The world needed me, and I'll save them. I'll be a hero. So, what do you want to be? I still want to be a hero. A hero that people will remember. But, I also want to be a great huntsman. Prove to myself now that where I came from doesn't matter. All that matters is that suddenly his scarf turns into a gun. As then he basically looks in the direction of Grim that was about to strike him, and he shoots in the face. That I do my job and help out as many people as I can. Just keep moving forward, even if I fail. No matter what, never looking back. But I will never forget where I came from. As the scarf turns back to normal. And he goes, Alright. As I say, he, you know, he closes his book. He's like, That is all I want to know. It seems like your world was harsh on you. And you were given a chance. I can see that much. You're not letting it go to waste. Thank you, Midoriya. And then he, he leaves. So, then the same thing happened with Ruby. So... The team asks about, well, each other, you know, what he asked you and such. Then they asked Ruby, he said they didn't ask anything. He goes like, he asked me something similar but different. He was like, like what? He was like, about my world and why I became a huntsman. 
to, to save it and just there well that was at first now i learned a lot more so he just tells him exactly the same thing what he told his the professor oblick oblick and he's like and weiss blake and yang root says that's that's pretty cool he's like huh i mean you learned you what you wanted you just added on to it and basically what you learn now it's you just add on to what you want to do I think that's pretty cool, Ruby says. But, like, you know, nods. And Yang says, kind of what I want to do, too. But you don't have a plan, right? He was like, no. I mean, you can't plan for anything in your life. All you can do is just plan one thing at a time. Which, why he says, well, excellent words. So, they do the whole entire camp setting up thing. So, Azuku's sleeping. He's not on the shift, you know, the, the night shift looking out. So, everyone's, well, basically, Weiss, Blake, Yang say the exact same thing as if he was sleeping. And, well, Ruby has the same thing that happens. You know, you know she basically goes, follow Zwei, and then she falls into the hole, gets captured. But, the thing is, that changes in this one. Izuku followed, like, her, like, you know... Well, basically, Ruby scream a little bit, and then, you know, how can I say this? He was basically near the, a different side of the window, so, yeah. So, basically, when, when he basically heard, he sees Swai coming to him, he's like, Swai, go get everyone, alright? He runs, he nods and runs. So, Zuku goes over to where the hall was, he was like, ah, crap. Wait. Caverns and underground. Tunnels. I mean, city. I mean, wait, not cavern. Wait. Caves. Underground caves. And city. And fountain range. And caverns. As he's thinking about it for a minute, and then the whole tire is actually the same thing will happen with them. Ruby, it's the same thing. So, when they go and, like, saving her, it does happen similar, but Zuku. Basically, legit, grabs one of them by the body, pulls them to him, and then he just kicks them in the face, burns them down to the ground, and he just looks at Roman, uh, well, as Roman goes like, ah, shit, not him. <laughs> so, yeah, he's saying, like, everyone, let's get out and start it. So, Izuku basically is like, you know, he's in the, you know, his attire, basically, for Huntsman. So, he does, like, have his pouches for smoke grenades, flash grenades, I mean, smoke bombs, flash bombs, um, shurikens, kunais, and he goes like, uh, Roman, why is he, as on Ruby, you know, basically was helped by Yang, and they basically, they hug, you know, because of white fame was in her way, they hug and such, and, you know, they gave her, her, well, scythe, slash, um, sniper rifle, and then they say about the train, and he's basically the teacher says it was underground cave, basically you know tomb, and it's blocked off. And then they suddenly say about the train getting started and rolling. And then Blake, I mean not Blake. Then Ruby says, "Let's stop that train." So yeah, Izuku agrees. He says, "Yeah, let's let's do this." And basically, all of a sudden though, for some reason, when he moves his like hand, the dust is coming off, and he's like, "But I didn't," as it just turns into a mask. He's like, what the? Huh? As it's just, you know, it's glowing a little bit. He's like, uh, okay. He puts it on and such. But when he puts it on, all of a sudden his clothing kind of change. It started to turn, like, basically, the basically his cloak was all black. You know, basically the hood and, and the cape, you know, was all black and such. His clothing from going... So like crows, basically it's like turning white and such. I mean not turning white, was white and such, but grayish. It's getting more black. And which basically but something like certain lines are coming on it. Well, basically along with basically his well boots are basically even like getting like a little tint to it. It's like, what the How's it even possible? Wait, gloves too? Which, everyone's shocked, even the professor's like, it's remarkable! I didn't know you could do that! He's like, 
I, I didn't know this could even happen either. In which he's thinking, dude, dude, for some reason this is semblance just, no, it couldn't have. It couldn't have like some consciousness, but also it's trying to protect me. Why would it protect me? I'll figure this out later. So he puts on the hood and such. He's like, all right, everyone, let's get going. Uh, so, you know, basically they go, they just run towards the chain. I mean, the train, and they do get on. So, yeah, everything goes from there, like in canon. The only difference is when the last cart, you know, basically, you know, basically has all the like the last explosives come off. Izuku sees it, and he sees all the grims. He's like, Professor, all those grims, if they get to the city, a lot of people get hurt, right? He was like, Yes, Izuku. That's why we need to hurry. He was. <laughs> I know Blake and everyone else is gonna be mad at me for this, but well, he goes, Izuku, he goes, just tell them, tell them just to hurry up, and <laughs> and tell Blake I'm not gonna die. As he jumps off of the train, basically, he basically the person says, Izuku, and, and you know he crumples his. You know, Fisk is like, the idiot! You know, he's runs, you know, forward. As everything on the train will go in canon. But we're going to stay to Izuku's perspective. And he's like, so, La Grim, <laughs> Berserker, Beowulf, um, a bear one, boar one, and snake one. <laughs> Alright. As he basically gets a staff and Saif comes on. Basically, the mass is starting to glow a little bit along the cloven that was getting the whole entire different, you know, symbols on it. Well, line, like, you know, markings on it. Starting to glow too. He's like, let's go. As he just starts running, he basically slicing the grim that was in front of him in half. And it just keeps on going from there. It's like all the grims are basically focusing just on him. For some weird reason. He does not know why. And basically, he starts, you know, using the, well, his abilities in season by himself. Basically, he shoots a fire out of his foot. And it's a lot more, well, deadlier than it was. Instead of, well, just a normal flame, it's blue now. He's like, I don't know how this is happening, but it doesn't matter. And when he throws, when, you know, he punches a, basically, a boar, you know, Grim in the face. Lightning goes through his fist and explodes the whole entire thing to pieces. He goes, come on then, show me what you're all made of. So he basically just keep on moving. He's starting to notice like electricity's coming off and he's moving faster. He's then like using well, the dust that he, you know, he can produce coming off him, turns into weapons, and he just starts you know, throwing them at the, uh, the Grims. The Grims who actually try to get past him, he throws flash from a bane, you know, fla you know, his flash bombs basically, onto the ground right in front of him as they get you know, distracted. And if he comes in, just slices them into pieces. So, because of this, not many Grims actually get to the city. It's only like probably a good 20 of them, which are taken out so easily. In which, when the actual, you know, forces come, Good Witch is about to seal up. And then, but Ruby says, well, then the says, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. Which, you know, is Oblik. And she was like, what? Why? He was... Izuku is down there. We have to hurry. And so, basically, while this is all happening, Izuku is taking out many Grims by himself. And he basically punches, well, the air is blew fire shooting at, basically, didn't destroy 20 of them. As the snake one tries to come at him, as then all of a sudden, he just, you know, turn up. He basically is able to dodge it. Barely. As he does, like, you know, cut the freaking thing in half. And yes, when I mean by Izuku's getting you know, claws and stuff, I mean, this has been going on for quite a while. Since the train was kept on going, the fighting and all that did happen. So, he does get, he has gone to bash, he has gone hit, he has gone clawed. He basically has basically been smashed into the walls, and some worms that were escaped were because he was basically got hit by this, and that's why there's only been 20. Izuku has been going faster, pushing himself. Basically, the electricity is also giving him scars, basically. As he was... Nah, it's done. It's a lot more than I thought. 
<sighs> as you know, he's clutching his fist with his staff. As the dust is starting to like come off him, he's like, I'm not done with any of this yet. And there's only like there's still some coming down from the holes. As basically fire is also coming off him and the dust is starting to turn to like glass projectiles but with flames of electricity now on it. As some rooms are backing away because like the mask and his clothing are also on fire and electricity coming out of it. So if you guys are wondering, am I making some of a reference towards an anime? <coughs> <coughs> Obvious, yes. So he's like, Come on! Why are you all scared? I don't know Grims were scared of anything! As they, basically some Grims are running towards, some are running away from him, as all of a sudden he just starts spinning his staff, the projectiles shoot out, like they were made to shoot at some, as when he starts spinning his staff, he then like turns around, as all the fire that he was like, enlightening, that he already had on him, he says, Take this! And when he basically flings it forward, it takes the shape of a phoenix, basically. It goes right towards him. But then he puts the staff, come, you know, come press it, you know, basically, you know, um, more for back and just to be the multiple parts. And then he does make an arrow and bow, bow, basically. And he pulls back on it. And the lightning and fire that's remaining around him goes onto it. He goes like this. He says, Take this. A move I came up with right now. Taste the arrow of the thunder, the thunder and fire gods. And when he shoots it, it basically shots out like, okay, I know this is gonna be like the most anime scene ever, somewhat. But imagine, basically the, none of the ground cracked, but the impact basically made like a little shock wave, and you know it basically goes right through. Passing some of them can burn and electrify, you know, electrify. As then basically another snake-like Grim comes forward and does get blown to pieces. And well, the whole entire cave collapsed in. And he was like, <laughs> Take that, stupid Grims. And you know, basically the mask falls off, his clothing gets back to normal. You know, back into the way it was. He realized he was out of shurikens, kunais, smoke bombs, and all well, flashbangs, basically. It's like, uh, luckily, that closed it off. Shit. Uh, my body hurts, and I'm covered for scars and probably. As you know, Azuku's kind of like, you know, turning around and just starts limping. As then all of a sudden he sees, well, his team. Gene, I mean, no, um, John, yeah, John, I, I just realized I keep calling him Gene, so I only did point that out, John, Kira, Nira, yeah, um, Nora, Lee, Goodwitch, Iron, you know, Ironwood, I mean, wait, Ironhard, right, oh, yeah, Ironwood, and basically, Velvet, um, Coco, Adel, Yo, 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 you know, I think it was yo, 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 Shushia, I mean, Suhashi, yo, Suhashi, Fox, is why, Bullock, I mean, I'm um, Professor Oblin and, well, basically Professor Peter. So, yeah, surprisingly. He just see Izuku. He does have blood on his well, forehead, body. You know, some of his clothes are ripped. Basically, the head blood coming off of it. And you know, he's just walking forward, and he's like, "Hey, <laughs> I, I survived." And you know, he follows. You know, he basically trips on his foot because, well, you know, he kind of was going in and out, and then falls. But Blake catched him in time. In which. Good were just saying, how did he, how many Grims did you said they were? It's like, a good, maybe hundreds of them? There was multiple holes coming, you know, form, so there was multiple Grims. But, how did he, he, he couldn't have took them all on, right? I was just looking at Azuku and looking at basically the base of what he made, like the whole entire thing collapsed. The tunnel collapsed in. He's like, he's just thinking. What type of training did this kid do? 
Did this much damage. I mean, he does have the a maiden's power, but how is that possible? While Zuku's in and out, he does see the well the figure, the power basically, and she goes, "Good job. You fought hard. Now you almost passed out a few times, but you kept pushing yourself. You basically pushed yourself too far." You deserve a rest, Suzuku. Take some. As he does finally close his eyes. Like, while everyone's just looking at what he has done, they, like, basically, Mercury and Emerald get there, and they're like, what the? How did he? Or who did this? As in, all of a sudden, they suddenly, everyone just sees a Grim. But in a fox, uh, not a fox, a wolf, just sitting there, right, like, near, like, basically, how can I say it, sitting, like, basically across from them. So if you look to your left side, it's, like, right across, so, like, nearest to, it looks like a, um, the pillar for, like, holding up the tunnel. Yeah. As everyone's, like, you know, getting ready, it's, I don't know what's about, you know, basically has a gunpoint, as... The wolf-like Grim is just sitting there. It just looks like a regular wolf. As it just, like, you know, starts to walk forward and, well, gets no shine, no showing signs of attacking. Which shocks everyone. And then when it gets to Izuku, it just starts licking his, well, basically Blake was holding him in her arms. And his face was, you know, nearby. So the wolf starts licking his face as he's like, Ugh. As then all of a sudden the wolf barks and wags its tail. As this is quite surprising. As Iron was like, what the? So, Oblak, Professor Oblak is like, remarkable, similarly remarkable. I've never seen a Grim do this before. How is this even possible? Which, the powers, you know, seeing this too. And it's like, huh. I never suspect this to even happen at all. Hmm. This is new with Grimms. So... Somewhere out in, well, far away distance, a bean was watching. And it says, huh, so he took that many Grimms on. Interesting. And how was that Grim, Grim even formed? That shouldn't have even be possible. Should be under my control, too. Hmm. But it's not. It seems different. I have to be careful. This boy could be a problem. I don't even know what he even looks like because of that mask. But he had power. Similar to one of the maidens, but it was different. Different shade of color. How was that even possible? Okay, let me just tell you guys this. The lighting that was going around instead of yellow, it was green. <laughs> I want to just tell you guys that. If you guys are wondering, how is this even possible? Well, basically, it's basically if you guys know science class or something to do with science, that's all I'm going to say. But, I know how it's done, I just can't explain it right without making a long, 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 you know, so, I'm not. But just know this, it has something to do with fire, basically having, like, more air, but also because of, if you really think about it, dust that's going around him, there are certain things that can make the fire actually be more potent to basically become a different color. So, if we go by that theory, the dust around him, basically it becomes like glass, but instead it can, you know, he can change into basically a blade form of shape. What happens then, if it basically a lot of it's condensed down because of the mass, and he can produce it all, it goes all over his clothing, and it's, cond and it's a highly, highly condensed down version of it. So by the time he basically can shoot a fire and such out of his fists and basically feet, it basically becomes a blue fire instead. Oh god, I, I'm using way too much of my intelligence, I think, now. I just I just want to make this a similar story, not you really show much of it. And it basically, it's my creativity working too. God, no. God, no. Okay, okay, enough about that. So, yeah. So, basically, Goodwitch, you know, we're going back down to where Goodwitch is and stuff, you know, looking at it, and she was like, um, hi there? As the wolf like Grim just looks at her and just barks, you know. Like a dog. 
because technically wolves and dogs are, well, wolves are basically the, well, animal, well, wildlife version, so, so it could bark too. Yeah, but anyway, so she's like, this is very strange. As in Oblak, basically, Professor Oblak says, Well, I do not think it will harm us. I think I'll basically, well, well somehow it's touch with young Zuku here, and it won't even harm us. So, come on, let's get out of this tunnel before, well, which everyone nods. So, basically, the wolf is fallen by Blake, and because, well, well, basically, fallen Blake, but Professor Oblak does take a Zuku and he says, I have him. Don't worry. She does not. And it's because she was becoming overprotective of him, let's just go, you know, when they say they're leaving the tunnel and everything, Blake is clenching her fist. And Yang says, Blake, he's alright. I mean, we don't know how much damage he's in. I mean, he's, he's bleeding, but <laughs> he'd be alright. She was, I did say he was an idiot, but I didn't know he'd be to do something this stupid. Ruby says, Blake, I know. I mean, we're gonna give him a start talking to him, right? As Blake nods as Ruby's and looks at Yang, then looks Yang looks at Weiss, and Weiss says, "Yeah, I mean he's our teammate, and yet he did it all by himself. What was he trying to do? Be a hero or just die? Heck, I'm even surprised he even did all that by himself. But now what would we do with him? As then Ruby says, "Hmm, should we name him?" Blake says. If it's attached to Zuku, then he should name him. Which she does say, right, right. So basically, they go onto the aircraft and they all go back to Beacon. And Zuku is technically taken to the, well, not the nurse's office, but to the actual hospital. As when they basically do <sighs> examine him, he gets. He's lucky they said he's even survived. <laughs> that's not like. That's like, see, they say he had broken ribs. And we'll fracture our arm and broken legs too. Apparently he even got electrical burns and claws marks even smashed into a couple of pipes. Which good which is there in only ironwood. Well and Ospin arrives and they say they tell him what happened. Which he's surprised as if he even fought that many Grims. He's like, My god, I didn't expect the boy to do that Which Iron was like one hunter one huntsman did all that, and yet he's been trained with that power for how long? Not that long. He's like exactly. That's not even the fact that you said he, well, even the, he gained something new. How is this even possible? He is different, Ironwood. He is from a different world, a different dimension. We cannot simply think his. DNA and this world will mix together right. There are sure be some complications, but it seems like these complications are working in our favor. It's like, I know, but still. And that Grim. Why is it in the room with him? I know he's all patched up and he's basically stitched. And basically, for some reason, soon the wolf gets near him. Something's starting to happen. And he, like, the wounds were quickly healing, but slowly. He goes, hmm. I'll go see if he's awake. Which, Ozpin walks into the room as, you know, good witch saying, Why are you getting at Ironwood? He's like, I don't trust him. I don't trust that boy. It's like, what? He's been helping us out. He's like, I know, but still, something ain't right. How is he able to do all this and yet... If he fought that many Grims by himself, something should have happened. He should have been dead, and the Grims should have swarmed. When we got in the tunnel, we should have been, like, killing them all. You know, fighting against them, and yet, he took them all by himself? Which, good, which was, I don't know. No one was there but him. We cannot, well, Professor Oblak told us as soon as basically he started like dust started coming off of him. We really analyzed the dust from what he can make. It basically turned to a glass form. He created it into anything. And when it basically he puts it on, 
all of a sudden more dust started coming off of him and started to envelop his clothing. It seems like, and there's some markings appear, so we have to ask him. So basically, we go now to Ozpin. As the wolf is curled up into a, like a ball next to Azuku, you know, in between, in between his arm and him, as he goes, huh, that's very cute. So the wolf, you know, sees him, doesn't growl enough, and just puts his head back down. And you know, he, Ozpin can see the light, and Azuku's like, oh, my head, that hurts. He's like, you're awake. You mind telling me what happened to you, Azuku? He's like. Headmaster, <laughs> well, I jumped into danger without thinking, and I fought all the Grimms. Because I heard, thank you for, because of you, many people were not hurt. Yeah, I know. And Roman Torchwick was arrested. I see. So, mind telling me why were all the Grimms down there fighting you? Well, you already know, know about the mask. It's so all of a sudden, it basically being shown. Basically, it only covered his eyes, you know, but, and then it kind of like started like changing his hair color too. But he was already, he was wearing the hood and such, so yeah. I mean, basically, he says, well, as soon as I put it on, it looked like my clothing changed and I got gloves on me, and, well, Markings start to appear. He's like, please elaborate with markings. He's like, it would look like some of them look like flame marks, but also electrical ones. Like lightning was hitting it, but they start to start going a pattern of. Well, imagine Cinder's markings on her like outfit, basically, but a little bit more different. Look like more of a crazy wild way. So, it's like, it's like, I see. So, as soon as you start fighting the Grimms, they start to glow a little bit, and then all of a sudden the Grimms are focusing on me. It was, ah, so. It seems like, because of that, they're focused on you. And you basically realizing some Grimms are leaving, you were able to keep them at bay. And you kept on going faster, am I correct? He was, yeah. You are right about the electricity surrounding me, making me move fast. It's like, yes. So that was another reason how you were able to keep them at bay. He goes, yep. And the creation of the dust thing came in handy too. <laughs> also, because my outfit changed, the fire was a different color. It's like, really? It was blue. I don't know how though. Basically, any time I basically hit a grim with it, it just disintegrated into dust. Heck, I was even actually make. Well, as he basically explains it, he was actually make a whole entire section of where it was just him. Everything in front of him was gone, but also pushed it aside, and they were burnt away. So he got some breathing room for a couple of minutes to catch his breath and then go right back in. He says a few times I almost passed out, but I kept pushing, kept going. I'm sorry if I worried you, or if you're mad, I just, I just couldn't, you know, Zuku's trying to, well, you know, not trying to feel like crap or, you know, basically think he's failed or in any way. If you're asking why, I mean... Not many people would take or hurt or die, so husband says, You did enough, Azuku. The damage was very minimal. Only if no one was dead. Only if well, some were scrapes or bruises. They were fine. You did well. And don't blame yourself for anything. What happened? You basically stopped the disaster. Because of you, many lives are saved. You can be proud of that. Thank you, Austin. He's like, now get some rest. I have a feeling your teammates are gonna start nagging you about this. It's like, uh, uh, they got anything so I can technically sleep for a couple of days? He was like, I'm afraid not, Azuku. Sleep well. 
Also, meet your new friend. As basically the wolf is just seeing him wagging his tail as he's like, a grim? Huh. Uh, sorry, I can't really move much. It hurts. As you know, the grim just starts licking his face, he's like, <laughs> that boy found. Huh. Hmm, I can't call you grim, so how about I give you a name? Hmm. How about Max? You like that name, Max? As basically the wolf, the wolf basically barks. He's like, Max, it is then. And basically, you know, it just like lays on him. It's like, all right, thanks. So, Azuku drifts off back to sleep. So Ozpen came out and told Ironwood what happened. Oh yeah, I mean he even I mean, wait, basically. I think he, I even forgot to mention him just telling him about the whole entire arrow thing, so, yeah, let's just say he has, I, I just, you know, he said that to him. As then, Iron says, okay, how did he do it? So, he explains how Izuku did it, and about the recent discovery of his, well, like, you know, electricity, so he's able to, well, increase his speed and reflex because of it, even perceive time maybe slowing down, which then he basically then tells them about how the fire was a different color because of the does and he says it might have condensed him down onto him so and which Ironwood's double shocked by this and then he even says about the fire van blue and how he invented a new move he basically called it the fire and lightning god you know arrow and that was the explosion that made the well everything collapsed in which go which says he has a lot of power so quickly. He says, not quick. Situational. And the drive to protect people. That is what he may have caused all this to happen. And his determination to not give up. So, I will give him a couple of days off. He should be fine. And... Well, his teammates seem like they are going to give him an ear for when he gets back to Beacon. So, Izuku is in the hospital, but they moved him then to the, well, Beacon's nurse's office. And, you know, just let him stay there for the day and so. Basically, that's, like, the next day. And, well, we will go to, like, Ozpin, you know, getting a call from the council, basically, commission or something. Like, you know, and they'll say, Ozpin? From what we've seen or heard... I mean, from what we heard from Ironwood, you basically have an excellent student on your hands. But the fact is that, well, his plan's risky. You know that. You know his plan says, yes, but the boy has proven himself. Don't you agree? As one says, yes, he has. But Ironwood has made suspicions of him. How is this even possible for him to even have this much power on his hands? His semblance is only erasure, er, erasing other people's semblance, dust abilities, and or auras, even making Grimm's weaker and the scarf. It was simple. As I, as everyone knows, even you, he's not from this dimension. Like, we know that. So, are you still going to, well, add anything more, gentlemen? She's like, yes. We were, well, we were going to have Ironwood to be more secure in the fall festival and the tournament, but it seems like with the students that you had, fought all these Grims, and did what he did, it is proven that you are well, teaching your well students well, keep the peace. But we would still like to have uh, at least a little extra security, which, well, Ozpin does not. He's like, so, are we going to have more forces by Ironwood? He goes, hmm, not exactly. Only a good more dozen of them. Which Ironwood thinks to himself, that kid, that's so he really did prove himself. They were swayed by what he did. He goes, I see. So, we are not going with an well when well, military force, are we not? He goes, we are not, Ozpin. If this virus is going to affect 
something. We have suspected something then. And we were not going to make a risk to have an army here. At the festival. Just a few more extra soldiers. Good more dozen of them. That is all. He goes, I see. He will, Vosfin. One more slip up happens, and we will give Ironwood full custody of security. He goes, Understood, John. Understood, gentlemen. As then, you know, they shut off, as, well, you know, Ironwood says, I have a few more men, a few more dozen men to come. He goes, Right. And so, the exact same thing will happen. He does have custody of, you know, Roman, Tortric, so yeah. And, well, we would go to the scene, but it's an hour and 30 minutes long, but eh, whatever. If this cuts out, then just know I will probably add in part 5. But, so, we would go to the scene where basically, John, John, Pyra, Nora, Lee, Ruby, Weiss, and Blake arrive. And, well... Basically, what they see is Mercury and Emerald. And, well, Cinder's not there. Cinder saw nothing of it. He just said, he just got lucky. But Mercury's like, hey man, how you doing? He's like, fine. Just all the scars on me. <laughs> and basically, they see the Grim right next to him. And they just look at them. And he doesn't growl. He just looks. And basically, Mercury's like, seriously, how do you have a Grim as a pet? Which Emerald's like, seriously? How's that even possible? He's like, I don't know. Lucky, I guess. <laughs> I call him Max. He seems to like the name a lot. As, you know, Bob barks and just start licking him. And he's like, <laughs> see? And like, that's kind of cool. Mercury says. He goes, anyway, it seems like you're about to be getting an earful. As he looks over, points to, well, Team Ruby. As he's like, uh, don't. He's like, he grabs Mercury and says, please, don't leave me. He's like, nope. It's, it's on you, man. As Emerald says, yeah, you basically did that. Suicide mission? You get the earful from girls. Have fun. As they, you know, leave. As, she, you know, John. I mean, not John. Jean. Wait. I haven't written it down as... Yeah, you know, wait, like John. I mean, not Jean. John, Pyra, Nora, and Lee. Be like, we're gonna wait outside. As he goes, hi, team. As, you know, Weiss is also there. As they, basically, Ruby says... Are the places you? I mean, not Weiss. I mean, Zawai Z- Z- is also there. I mean, Weiss, I mean, you know, then says, I mean, A, and Yane says, Idiot! I was basically just start yelling how like stupid he went in head first while I plan, telling them, even asking for backup, just basically telling them, like how dangerous it was he could have died and such. And if like, said, you know, adds in saying, like, basically saying, Did you even think about how I would feel? How basically, what happens if you died? As that next day, she just realized something. As it was like, uh, uh, um, Blake. Because I mean, because you're my friend. Nothing else. As Ruby says, you know, Ruby's just saying, yeah. And well, I mean, kind of gets quiet. He's like, yeah, I did, but the thought of name, the thought of some people dying, and we didn't know if any backup was gonna come. I just. Well, if I took some out, you guys will be safe along with everyone else. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a hero. I was just trying my hardest just to keep everyone safe. That's all. I'm sorry if I worried you guys. As basically, you know, Max, you know, whimpers a little. He's like, I'm fine, Max. Don't worry. As, you know, his, his ears were down, but then a little bit up now. As, well, Blake just goes over and saying, I'm not mad, I'm just really upset that you went in there, okay? No one told us how bad you were, but from the way you look, I thought you were going to die. And she hugs him and saying, just promise me, don't do anything stupid like that again. It's like, I, I don't think I will be able to keep that promise, though. I'll just say I'll try. He basically he's hugging her with his left arm. As basically Team Ruby all has a group hug. And well. Max and Zoi are at the end of the bed. As then afterwards. They say now then Ruby says. Let's start training whatever we can get out of here. And win the tournament. He goes yeah. 
<laughs> As, you know, Yen White says, I don't think we need to. Yang also agrees to that. So does Blake. But, Zuko says, nope, I still got a train. But they all look at him like, when I get out of the nurse's office and take a couple days break, they nod. It's like, <laughs> and he's thinking, why are they so scary right now? Yeah, and then he looks at Blake, giving it the death stare of the lifetime. He's like, especially Blake. So, and this is where we're going to leave it off, everyone. I hope you guys like this what if, this part. I'll be working on like some other parts later, tomorrow, basically, of different what ifs, maybe. Or just watch Ruby. So, bye everyone. Have a nice day and night wherever you are. Bye.